Welcome, everybody. I'm James Goddard, uh, head of Killer Instinct over here at Xbox, and I'd like to introduce you to Adam Hart, our lead combat designer from Iron Galaxy. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming to the show. We've been hyping it uh, all week. I'm really excited to finally get to show you guys all the balance changes we've been cooking up. And uh, I want to remind you all that restreaming and reacting to today's stream is absolutely encouraged. And uh, if you make one of those streams, please turn the face cam on. We love to see your emotions and send us a link afterwards. And I'm sure a lot of people on the team will check those out. Yeah. So today is the 10th anniversary of the release of Killer Instinct uh, back in 2013 with the launch of Xbox One. Uh, we want to take a moment to thank all the developers who made the original version possible. Double Helix, all the people at Xbox, of course, Iron Galaxy, all the, developer, all the developers who spent time after that. There's been a ton of people in the background who's worked on the game in different departments. And also, you guys, all the streamers, all the influencers, all the players, all the tournament organizers. You guys are the reason why we're here. I mean, this game was a major milestone for me in a lot of ways in my life. But, you know, I remember just that first time we were at E3 demoing Dive Kick and the Double Helix guys were there demoing KI 2013 for the very first time. And me and Maximilian got to go uh, get a little bit of private time on the build, just me and him for, for an hour or so while we both had a break because we were both pretty busy. I, I swear that game changed both of us. Just everything about it, the way it felt, it just felt like so you know responsive and crisp in a way that a lot of the games coming out at the time didn't the combo breaker system instead of feeling like dumb or tacked on felt like just this really revolutionary core part of the game that added a gambling aspect that was just way too addictive uh but chasing that high ever since and obviously getting you know a, a year or so later a chance to actually work on the game was you know obviously a huge milestone in my life um so very very excited to get to revisit this with you james yeah me too i mean <sighs> Yeah, I go so far back, you know, for me. I mean, uh, when I first heard rumors we might do KI inside of Microsoft, I had just joined, and yeah. I just joined to work on Rise on a Rome, and I was figuring, well, when they asked me to interview it, it would be KI or Rise on a Rome, and it was Rise on a Rome. And then someone came by and said, do you know the people over at Double Helix? And I'm like, actually, I do. Uh, I'm not of most of them. We work together. <laughs> yeah. Way back on a whole bunch of stuff. And so, you know, uh, when they start working on it, it was just awesome. And, uh, you know, over time, I just got to, you know, jam with them. And then this happened and we got to work together. And I mean, geez, 10 years later, look at us. Look at look at the long road we've been on. I know. And, it's you know there's been one. so many things that we've done that is, is wild, cutting edge, crazy. But, you know, that's why we're here. Absolutely. So I think uh, other than balance today, we are going to get a small glimpse at some of the new UI updates. Is that true, James? Uh, yes, uh, we are. And uh, let's take a look at this thing right here. <clears throat> is this our new color scheme for uh, this version of the game? Yeah, you know, every major season or, uh, you know, we always have changed the color theme. And with this one, we want to give a nod back to... KI Gold on N64. It's not exactly verbatim, but it's definitely inspired by. And so this is, you know, part of what we're doing. Yeah, if you bring the camera back to me, I actually uh, had this in my living room, my own cartridge for KI Gold. So you can see how well the colors match up kind of <laughs> with this camera. So, uh, yeah. There is a purple and gold in there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, it's pretty awesome. All right, so. Before we get started uh, going any farther with this stream, I want to introduce today's very special guest. He was sitting right beside me and Isaac when we did the live Season 3 Rebounds reveals at KI Cup. Uh, and he is one of the most insightful and strong people in the fighting game community. He's really good at kind of seeing the big picture and breaking it down in a way that a lot of others aren't. So, uh, you know, one of my favorite people to talk to about fighting games. So happy he was able to join us today. Stay Jam, welcome. What's up? Howdy gamers. How goes it? How's everybody doing? Hope everybody's chilling. I everything is so purple and gold and pretty. I gotta say, um, I was lucky enough to take a little look at it in the game, and boy, you guys did a great job. The new visual, like aesthetic of the game, is incredibly nice. It's it's super cool. Yeah, players will get to see that in just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Hey, uh, Say Jam, can you tell us a little bit about your history with Killer Instinct? Yeah, I mean, I, Ki came out at like the perfect time for me because I'm sure a lot of people have this. Like when they were younger and they were interested in fighting games, they thought they were so cool. And they're like, hey, parents, can underage me go fly to this video game tournament? And they're like, no. 
Uh, absolutely not. So then I like right when I got out of high school and I like had some wiggle room to like, you know, go do things myself. KI came out. So it was like the perfect timing where I was interested in fighting games. And then Killer Instinct came out in like 20, uh, 2013 when I had started to travel and do some more stuff. So it was like the perfect time for me to play the game. And I loved it. It's like the first competitive game that I was interested in traveling around for and doing stuff with uh, at the time. And it was just like it, it struck the perfect time. And it's a game I'm always happy to come back and play. Like, I feel like I always come back at least once or twice a year and do like a KI session. And this update it makes me really excited. It's like there's so many cool things happening for fighting games right now. And so the idea of like KI being a game on the docket in 2023 slash 2024 that you're like, oh yeah, there's some new KI stuff. Let me go play some KI is a really strange, but awesome feeling, I think. Surprise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, this, this stream, uh, it's not going to be quite the same amount of changes as that infamous and famous stream uh, that we did back at KI Cup 2013. Do you want to say anything about that, Adam? Because that's that was a groundbreaker. Yeah, cool. I mean that's that's one of my core memories that forms me as a person at this point. <laughs> you know, uh, back then uh, I had pitched to James the the timing for the season three rebalance uh, being done and the timing of KI Cup that year are like the stars are aligning. Can we go reveal this in front of a live studio audience and risk our lives? <laughs> and James is just like, what would you say, James? <laughs> well, you know, I was maybe a bit more conservative back then. I was yeah. like, we're going to do what? I mean, <laughs> yeah. oh God, that's, that's crazy. No one does that. And that became our mantra. No one does that. Yeah. So we did. And you guys killed it. I mean, again, what, what was it like two and a half hours or more? Yeah, um, we got about two hours worth of content today, too. <laughs> yeah, okay. It's, it's darn close. It's darn mm -hmm. close. But yeah, I mean, again, one of the things I, I definitely love about how that goes is, you know, we always have the interaction with the community and, you know, we 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 love talking about the changes and why we do the changes. And, and really, frankly, I don't think anybody does that better than, than your team. So uh, I'm really excited to get into this. So actually, with that in mind, we have a lot to cover today. So, um, yeah, let's get, let's, we're going to go through all the balance changes live. Uh, Sejam has not seen any of this, so you'll no. get his live reactions and he'll be able to ask questions as Adam goes to the demo. Well, he got to poke around the build. He hasn't been presented any of this information. So at the end, we'll have a couple more updates for you from our friends at 86, by the way, which I am wearing the freshly refreshed uh blue glacius shirt and there's something cool that's new coming from a6 at the end that we'll show you and then uh we're going to do the full patch load we'll upload the full patch loads uh, patch notes online uh so until then you'll just have to follow along with adam adam and say jam and see what's changing that's right james let me ask you a question when's this update going to drop and what's it called <laughs> well it is called killer instinct anniversary edition so it will include everything you're going to see here today. It, that All that is in final testing right now, and we'll announce a release date as soon as possible. So stay tuned to KI Socials for that announcement. And then I want to talk really quick about additions here. So what you're seeing on screen is something very cool. We're very excited about this. If you think about this, the journey of KI, we went from Season 1 to Season 2 to Season 3 to Season 3.5. We had a la carte characters. <laughs> we had different editions. We have like eight different editions over the years. We have a definitive edition. And so, you know, when we got the opportunity to move KI into all new technology uh, on the Xbox side and, and um, all the de new development kit, new services with PlayFab, we want to streamline things because this is all those a la carte offers are part of what makes things challenging. And when we get support report, reports of people missing content, so we're streamlining everything. And what you're seeing here is with the release of Anniversary Edition, we'll have the free-to-play KI base game that's always been there and one edition, which is KI Anniversary Edition. And so uh, let's talk about the free-to-play game. That's been improved. All 29 characters on the roster are now rotating weekly instead of bi-weekly, and it used to only be 21 of them. So it's all of them. A couple more things we've done in there that are, are nice that we'll talk about later. And then Anniversary Edition uh, will be the premium upgrade with all 29 fighters, all the premium content we ever did, including holiday accessories, which some of you may have missed. They'll just be unlocked now. Uh, the VIP double XP booster and, you know, 
anything else in there that I'm not covering right now. Uh, you know, there'll also be KI Gold, of course, which will help you with your progression shortcuts. But that's just for in-game in uh, content like skins and accessories that and colors that you unlock as you level your characters up. So everything premium is unlocked in this edition. So let's talk about what that means for some exist existing editions like Definitive. So <clears throat> Definitive Edition, and along with a lot of those other a la carte offers I mentioned, they're being retired after this. So it'll just be the base game and KI Anniversary Edition. So what that means though, is there's M-rated content in the KI Definitive Edition that I think is important to talk about. That's, that's just the KI Classics. The KI we know and love is a teen rated game. KI Classics are M rated. And so those are standalone apps. So when we retire this, KI Definitive Edition is being retired and so are the classics for now. We'll figure out what to do with them later. And so anybody who already owns Killer Instinct Definitive Edition, don't worry, all of your content is still there. It's always in your library. You can go download your classics. You can download the Definitive Edition app. These are the only things that are being retired that are not gonna be available anymore after this. Uh, if you ever own just one character, if you ever own like season two ultra edition, all that's still in your library. There's nothing's going away. So I just want to reassure everybody that this is just a streamlining and everything you had is still there. And I think that is it for that one. Cool. So basically, if I bought any version of this game before, I'm just going to get that upgrade. Yes. Awesome. Uh, well, yes. Well, sorry. If you have definitive edition, right? right. You have definitive edition, and if you, yeah, and anything else you had is still in your library, and you can still I got it. it. Cool. Yeah. Well, let's talk about Steam really fast, and then we'll move on to the the fun stuff of the balance. Sweet. So, so Steam, Steam is actually getting unified with the other three edition, with the other two editions, and in, in the sense that it now has a free to play. Steam was purchase only before, so if you ever had friends who were like, "Well, I'm not sure." Uh, and they didn't have access to Xbox or the or the Win 10 version of KI. Now they can just play the free to play version on Steam. We've introduced that, and it's the same exact deal. Two editions, everything streamlined. Owners of the current Steam edition, it's an automatic update to Anniversary Edition, just like Definitive Edition on Xbox and PC. So yeah, I think that is all the business that I needed to cover for editions. Let's get to the balance. All right. Thanks a ton, James. It's a lot of info. Uh, we'll definitely touch on it again at the end of the stream. Steve, you ready to do this thing? Yeah. Let's take a look. I'm so excited. I haven't seen anything, and I'm I'm roaring. I'm ready to go. It was a it was a mutual understanding that I was like, hey, I don't want to know any. And you were like, you don't get to know anything. And I was like, yeah. all right. We shook hands on it, and I was like, cool. I get to see everything live with everybody else. So I'm really excited to see it. Yeah. The only thing I told him was there's ten characters that didn't get any changes, and that he could play with those and those only <laughs> so yeah so we we made sure that you and i could play online if need yes. be and we played characters that had no changes exactly. which is fun uh and then i closed the app and then i waited <laughs> i waited for today so that i could see all the changes so yeah i'm excited to see it yeah um so i'm just gonna navigate to the character select screen here mm -hmm. in uh practice mode just so you can see this all new character select screen before i, I get into my spiel uh, the portraits have been completely redone. They look absolutely incredible. And you can see the whole new color scheme is, is here as well. Lots of purple. Uh, the giant gas fart clouds are now gone. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I don't know how much you're going to cover about all the, the changes to everything, but it's very noticeable if you boot up on, like, a higher, like, resolution or higher refresh rate monitor yeah. and you look at the game now versus before, it's... It's very clear, yeah. There's been a lot of UI upscaling and redoing just to make sure that it looks really clean and crisp if you play on, you know, a high resolution monitor. Because this game is 10 years old. It was like a launch mm -hmm. game on uh, Xbox One. So all that work, uh, pretty incredible. I think you guys are really going to appreciate it, especially if you're in the year of 2023 or 2024 playing Killer Instinct, which is very cool. So yeah. I'm going to jump back to the script here. I was going to uh, say, too, and for a lot of us, we, we yeah. didn't even have that stuff back then. Like, 2013 right. was before everybody was focused on that stuff. So, exactly. very cool. All right, so, before we get going, uh, I want to let people know that this stream is going to have an after party on Sayjam's channel. So, he'll have access to the beta version of this build, and he'll be able to test stuff out in training mode with you and for you. Uh, Steve, if you need someone to beat up during your stream, I will stop by and donate my... Uh, out of practice hands. <laughs> <laughs> this picture. I, I know what this is from. This is the most random place to grab a picture, too. Okay. Yeah. I'll choice. be there. 
Yeah, um, we had originally a more mundane choice, but that's that's the right one to go with. No, yeah, it's that's great. Yeah, that's how I'm co I'm over there cooking. That's how I look when I'm uh, exactly what's it called when I'm <laughs> testing stuff. So yeah, uh, I'll be there. I'll I'll take uh, questions and then yeah, we can do some gaming as yeah. well. But uh, I, I'm not gonna like sit there and be like like testing super extensively every little detail. But we'll go over. You know, I want to do like broad strokes of a lot of characters. Yeah, and the full patch notes will be out then as well, so you can reread them as, mm -hmm. as you need to. All right, so. Let me take a little sip here. <laughs> I have a long spiel to go through at the start. Okay. Yeah. Ma, ma, ma. All right. Here we go. <laughs> Don't freak out, everybody. Steve, feel free to interrupt me at any time during any part of this presentation with a question or comment. Let's have some fun. Keep it conversational. And before uh, I read the introduction to the patch notes, I just need to run to my basement laboratory to grab my lab coat, which I forgot. So I'll be right back. Okay. He's gone. It's us, chat. I can tell you that the secret to the universe and life is in this build, and I've accessed it when he wasn't looking. And I can now reveal to you that secret. Why? All right. Got my lab coat on. Just like my mad scientist, Conra. Got my wraps on my sleeves. Thanks to James Goddard for sending me this shirt last week. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> I feel like your hair changed. Like you hit hair and makeup like you did a stage performance. All right. OK, on with the show. If this thing gets too hot, I'm going to rip it right off my body, just so you know. Mm -hmm. All right. Hello, killers. Long time no patch. Version 3.9.13 launched on August 16th of 2018. And in the five years since then, a ton of you have continued to play Killer Instinct, develop new strategies, and push what is possible at the top levels of play. We've been given the rare opportunity to do one more training pass after all this time, so we secretly recruited a few of KI's strongest and smartest players to get their feedback on what minor adjustments they'd want to see. Yeah, I'm going to need a cough drop. This is going to be a tough one. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. The goal of this balance update is to reduce frustrations of some of the game's strongest characters and moves, while also giving a little love to the characters who tend to struggle even after five years of player effort. Not every character is getting changes, and the changes coming in will, in most cases, not affect your playstyle much. If your characters did not get any changes, keep in mind that some of your more difficult matchups may have gotten easier. We hope that these changes will breathe some new life into KI's competitive scene, and we look forward to watching you compete for as long as you're still having fun doing so. The team wants to genuinely thank the community for their passion and dedication to Killer Instinct. If you never stop playing, we hope you really enjoy the update. If you're coming back because of the changes, the community will welcome you with open arms and help you catch up because despite being killers, they really are that nice. While we did receive a multitude of requests for changes and fixes, time is not infinite. The team prioritized the issues we felt would have the largest impact and tried to take our usual creative approach to them. Some changes such as bug fixes may have been passed on because they were too risky or too difficult to adjust in the limited time we had to work on the update. Your understanding is appreciated. <clears throat> we will try to include the reasoning used for each set of the changes below, as well as an indication of it, if each change is intended to be a buff or a nerf. You actually won't be able to see that today, but on the actual physical patch notes that we'll release later, you'll see the buff and, and nerf notations. Uh, select community members weighed in heavily on these changes to give us the best possible chance at improving a game you already love. And we'd like to give them a special thanks for their time, dedication, and invaluable feedback. So, shout outs to Sonic Dolphin, Nikki, Wheels, Charbok, Latalis, Hello World, and Roman. The rest of you know who you are, and it's up to them if they want to reveal themselves. Thank you to all of you for making this as great as it could be. Again, the full patch notes will be available online shortly after this stream to read at your own pace. Long ass intro, I got through it. Steve, any questions? Did it. Uh, no, just before that, I, yeah, I wanted to touch on something you mentioned where if your character didn't change, or even if your character got slight buffs or nerfs, you got to remember that this whole thing, like every character, there, there'll be a shuffle. Right. If your character was like maybe on the weaker side and your two weakest, you know, matchups got nerfed, then your character might be much stronger. Right. So it's just important to remember that uh, don't freak out. And if you if you do freak out, uh, don't freak out at them. Uh, <laughs> freak out and keep it in your house and then uh, calm down a bit and then play the game. Exactly. Exactly. So, some of all parts. The, the spiel I always give in front of all my balance yeah. things. Um, <clears throat> wait to hear it all. See how it all fits together. All right. So uh, first up, we only have one small system change that I want to go over. I'm not going to show it here, but we fixed a game-wide bug that could sometimes cause projectiles to not get the first hit 2x damage bonus. So you could occasionally see things like Eagle's Bird or Rash's Bike do less damage than expected. Oh my god, Rash got a buff. 
<laughs> not really. It's but already beginning. It's a game wide issue. Game wide issue, and that's fixed now. Uh, so you shouldn't see that happen anymore. It'll just make things feel more consistent, which is really good. Uh, additionally, we found a bunch of attacks that deal less damage or less hit stun than expected when they counter hit. So we fixed those issues on a lot of characters. The full patch notes are going to call out which ones, but on today's stream, I'm just going to skip over those because it gets a little too nitty gritty. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right. So to avoid leaving people in too much suspense, I want to talk quickly about the characters who did not get any balance changes. The character I'm about the characters I'm about to list did not receive any balance adjustments, though a few did get a minor bug fix or two. Uh, there's a few reasons for that. Firstly, the changes to other characters are going to impact their matchups, so you'll find that some of their hardest matchups have gotten easier. Secondly, we didn't want to make risky changes just for the sake of making changes, so we carefully considered community feedback when deciding which issues to tackle. Lastly, we believe that these characters are still very capable and strong even without any changes. From Saberwolf's powerful ground control to Hisako's mix-up potential to Mira's extreme damage, we feel they should work even better in this new version and remain fun and relevant for everyone. So, here's the list of the 10 characters. I'm just going to rip the band-aid off. These are the 10 characters who did not get any balance adjustments. Saberwolf, TJ Combo, Kanra, Ripter, Hisako, Cinder, Shadow Jago, Arbiter, Mira, and Kilgore. That's 10, right? Yeah, that's 10. I can count, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so the winner of the guessing contest on Twitter was Twitter was uh, Dylan Deck with six correct guesses. Thanks to everyone who participated in that. That was a good bit of fun. And for the rest of the list, we're going to go through in release order. So we will start off with Mr. Jago. Mm -hmm. Whoops. There we go. I'm going to be doing player one with arcade stick and player two with a, a game pad. And sometimes I'll have to do both at once. Uh, we'll see how that goes for me. <laughs> Uh, so I want refill on the meters. I got my input display on. Looking good. Cool. And we're off, everybody. We increased Jago's forward and backward walk speeds by 10%. This small improvement will help Jago maintain favorable screen position. So he's a little bit faster now. It's actually, it feels pretty nice, I would say. That seems huge, yeah. That is a really, I think walk speed is one of the biggest busts a character can ever get. It's really Yeah, nice. sometimes it really makes a huge difference. Yeah. Um, we also drastically improved the hitbox and active time of Jago's jumping heavy punch, this guy right here. This move has like a pizza cutter quality to its animation, but the hitbox is very conservative on that compared to other similar looking jumping attacks. So these improvements are going to help it make it feel as good as it looks. So it hits a little earlier and up a little higher, and it also lasts a little longer and hits behind him for a little longer. So it's really easy to get those kind of juicy cross ups with it. It's a small change, but it's pretty nice. And then here's Probably my favorite change of all of the changes in the entire change list. Um, <laughs> we did some uh, adjustments to the Tiger's Fury special. So Jack of all trades protagonist characters often find themselves in an undesirable spot late in a game's life cycle. Jago is a very complete character, but he does not stand out and isn't scary in the way that much of the rest of the cast is. So we wanted to figure out how to add some threat to Jago's toolkit and decided to lean into our mantra of high risk, high reward. So to do this, we've decided to center Jago's identity around the idea of high damage Tiger's Fury. So the light Tiger's Fury now does 26 damage, used to be 18. The medium now does 30, used to be 22. And the heavy now does 34, used to be 26. So this is a very significant amount of extra damage, but it gets really wild when we turn on our counter hits. Uh-oh. Because uh, these got an even bigger buff on counter hit. So the counter hit damage on, and they actually have a ton of extra hit stop as well. So the light one is now 32 on counter hit. Got that kind of juicy freeze to it. The medium's 40. And uh, here's the scary one, heavy, 50, da 50 damage up front. So these hurt really bad. And if you jump and press the button and you get clipped out of the air by this guy, yeah, that's a lot of life to lose to an unbreakable single hit. But it's very risky. If they block this, you, you know, you're going to get blown up. You're going to eat a 19% unbreakable opener in reply. And uh, what we found in practice was that, you know, the rest of Jago's fairly mundane toolkit, like his fireballs and faking those out and getting you to jump and doing some of his little frame traps that are, you know, cute, but not super scary. Suddenly they become a lot scarier when if you decide to press jab or something and he decides to just risk one of these, you take a ton of damage. That does so much yeah. damage. <laughs> 
I like my favorite thing is you, you're like we're very you know conservative with our changes, and you're like Jago murders you if you get hit by DP. That is really funny. Not all of them are the most conservative changes, but you know <laughs> the goal was to compress the top characters down a little and the bottom characters up a little. You know how mm -hmm. it goes. Um, this was an interesting one with our test group as well, our, our NDA test group. And I'm sure they'll tell you after this is over, but I pitched this change to them and they were all horrified. And, uh, and I was like, just let, me, just let me put it in tomorrow and see how it feels. Let's just try it for a week and if we hate it, we'll take it out. And they came around on it like almost instantly. They were like, yeah, this is actually super fun and cool and it really works for the character and, and gives him some identity that he kind of needed. So, uh, yeah. I, I was going to say, I'm very scared of like counter hit DP instinct. That sounds like a bad yeah. time. Yeah, but you know, you know, seems... you need for a hit for all that big damage, so it's not yeah, too yeah, too yeah. bad. Yeah. Uh, yeah the last... Wow. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that seems really good for Jago. <laughs> I, his walk speed, I think, is like so nice too. I, I think there the matches where he has to walk you down, where he, you know, his screen control is just not good, and doing wind kick from full screen, you just die. Like those kinds of matchups, I think the walk speed will really help. Exactly. Exactly. So the last change for Jago is we made the first active frame of the shadow wind kick reach a little lower. Um, and we also made the push box taller for the first four frames. This is a little nitty gritty, but there were some cases where he could shadow counter someone who was low profiling and he would just sail right over him. And this prevents most of those cases. There are still some cases where a character is side switching with him and he'll still miss, but this stops some of the cases where the person was like low profiling. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, are we having a frame rate problem? Yeah. yeah, sure. Let me kill my feed real quick. Kill it. And then reopen it. That fixes everything. Yeah. It has been running for a while. Yeah, it also looked good for me, so I'm not sure. Try the 720. Let's see how it looks. All right, let me know. We good, Derek? Are we, are we good? Am I back? Okay. Yeah, I think it booted me for a second. Looking good? Looking clean again? I'm missing, like, everybody on the stream here. Okay. I don't have Sejam or James on the feed anymore. Oh, there's, there's, there they are. They're oh, coming hi. back. All right. I must have had an internet hiccup or something. Hopefully that doesn't happen again. Okay, cool. Well, we're good, yeah? I love that he, the game freezes for like a full second when you do the DP. The hit stop is unreal. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty juicy. I'm a big fan. You, you can feel it in your chest when that hits you. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. That is it for Mr. Jago. Moving on. Okay. I like those changes. The walk speed especially. I'm a, I'm a walk speed enthusiast. That's like the best buff I could get. You know, yeah. so I'm, I'm all about it. All right, so now I'm using my game pad to play Glacius. Uh, we got some changes for Glacius here. We reduced the frame advantage after a successful combo breaker to zero. It used to be plus four. He used to have the most advantage off of a combo breaker in the game. Uh, and it also left you at a distance where he could kind of just do this. And because he was plus four, that was tough to deal with. So this change should make that situation feel a lot more manageable after a combo breaker from Glacius. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I'll try to demo that. I'm going to hold up on both. Look at that. They're about even. Pretty mm -hmm. good. All right, uh, we also reduced the pushback on block from the light, medium, and heavy cold shoulder attacks so their frame data actually matters. These are minus three, minus five, and minus eight on block, which remains unchanged, but previously Glacius, Glacius could be so far out of range that most characters couldn't punish him even if he was very negative. So let's see what that looks like. That's the heavy, that's the light, that's the medium. He's very in there. So you can actually get punishes on this, this guy now. Uh, that's a huge change for Glacius. They're gonna have to be a lot more thoughtful with this move cover it with hail a lot more often to make sure they have some insurance behind them. Um, but there is kind of a, a bonus to this where if you make somebody block this and then you go shadow hail, you can actually get a true block string with it, which wasn't true before. Uh, if they're standing, if they're crouching, I think they can still wiggle out. But mm. uh, yeah. kind of a big deal for Glacius to not be able to just throw that out quite as often. Uh, and then last up for Glacius, we added four frames of recovery time on whiff and block to the instinct teleport puddle punch. Uh, it's now minus 16 on block, you see minus 12. All combos on hit are the same, the manual cancel window hasn't changed, so it feels exactly like it used to. Um, the difference is if, you know, somebody jumps it, 
um, or blocks it, they're going to have a bit more time to hit him and maybe deal with the armor. Uh, some characters like Arbiter could block that from a range where they couldn't really hit a Fierce or anything like that to even deal with the armor. So that, that helps as well in that matchup. And uh, yeah, that's it for Glacius. Okay. Yeah, that seems about right. The uh, the whiff on Puddle Punch, yeah. I mean, it was very often that you would just like jump and then not be there. And then he would just be like, I don't care. And then just smoke you with armor. So you're like, well. Yep. Next up, we're going to put Thunder and Sadira on the screen. All right. So for Thunder, this is kind of a big one. We limited the time window in which a follow-up has to be chosen after all versions of Samovich. Mm. So visually, once Thunder's feet start to drop below Jago's head, Sadira works for this. She's about the same height as him. Um, follow-ups will no longer be possible. So you used to be able to do these up to one frame before you touch the floor. So check out my input display over on the left. You can see when, I, when I'm pressing the buttons, right? If I do the animation, I fall below her head and I hit that button, nothing happens. I have to do it much earlier than that. Mm -hmm. Right? But if you hit it above the head, you know, you can still get out whatever follow-ups you want to get out. Uh, so you have to commit to these a bit earlier than you did before. And uh, that kind of gets rid of some of the most frustrating nonsense that, front, that Thunder was kind of doing to people, which is just kind of throwing this out, uh, abusing the you know high priority and projectile and vulnerability, and then hitting a follow up so low to the ground that it was so hard to deal with with his choices, no matter what they were. So um, huge change for Thunder. Yeah, huge, um, yeah. We also added five additional frames of recovery time to landing after Samamish, Surprise Knee, or Dropkick. So that doesn't apply to Skyfall, but if you just land from a Samamish, or you land from drop kick or surprise knee, you use five more frames of recovery before you can block or jump right there as well. So players are going to be able to probably, in most cases, react to which choice he makes because of when he has to make it and be able to punish him if he's making really bad guesses with this move. So again, huge change for Thunder. Um, this would be a huge nerf overall for him if we didn't add a couple buffs back in, which we wanted to do because again, the goal of this change was to just reduce one of those frustrating aspects, not to necessarily nerf the character. Uh, and you'll see a couple of those in the change list as well. So what we did was we increased his forward and backward walk speeds by 20% to compensate for this stuff and help him play a more uh, strong grounded game with his strong set of normals and specials. So this dude is moving pretty fast now. It's a huge, huge increase for him. And he has some incredible buttons to press, all kinds of great ranges on these. This is really going to help him play the footsies game, play the ground game, keep control of the match. And then the last thing we did for him to compensate was we shortened the recovery time on Call of Sky, where you give the Crow's buff to yourself by five frames. So Lightning still hits on the same frame, but it has five frames less recovery. Uh, so you can get that buff on yourself a little bit more easily in matches where uh, an opponent can quickly throw themselves across the screen and punish you. Helps a lot. That's it for uh, Thunder. Man, those are great changes. I was gonna say too, the one thing about the walk speed is like walking up and doing DP to like beat stuff. Sam mm -hmm. is probably much easier too, right? Because you're already walking forward, so it gives you that extra little range to like walk in and then get like the tip at reach of it where it's hard to walk away from it. So yep. that might also help a bit too. Especially if but people yeah. are poking with mids and like from this range, right? Yeah. No, that's great. I mean, I think everybody knows that when Thunder just is doing Sam Amish over and over in neutral, like it sucks, right? It just, <laughs> you're just like, yeah. dude, this sucks. Like I'm just getting help. Like, so exactly. I'm happy like, that the, the game plan is moving slightly away from that and towards yeah. stuff about him that's more fun to deal with. Like I said, the goal that changes a lot is to kind of take some of those frustrators and sand them down a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, make the characters a little bit more fun to fight against, but still keep them, keep them strong. Yeah. All right, let's talk about Sadira. Um, we fixed a bug that allowed her to cancel her uh, to call her web instinct projectiles during a combo breaker. So she could do a combo breaker, call the web projectiles, and she could actually get pressure off a combo breaker, which just isn't in the spirit of the game. So we just got rid of that ability. Um, small thing. But uh, we did want to give her a buff. Um, we increased Sadira's forward and backward walk speeds by 20%. Now, as you know, percents are a larger number on a character that was already kind of fast. So she is really cruising. She's among the fastest ground characters in the game now. Really, 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 really good. <laughs> Um, she's so fast. She's really fast. But she had like this problem before where her jumping is actually really fast as well. And it was much faster than her walking. So you would see this. Uh, and what we made this change basically so that when Sidira players don't want to jump around like an unhinged maniac, they can actually use her great grounded buttons and, you know, keep control of the game, get in position for those really nice anti-airs. 
uh, this one especially, right? This leads to a lot of party. Um, I think it really just helps the character a lot if the Sidira player can stop holding up. So we'll see how well that goes for the Sidira community. Yeah, you're like not gonna, it's a deer players are gonna be like, dude, we got no buffs. They're gonna be playing for like three weeks and be like, did this character get a single change? Yeah, there are some players who do play a more grounded Sidira, and I think those players are gonna make the character look really scary. Yeah. But she's already pretty good. Yeah. All right, nice. let's Walk keep it moving. Mm -hmm. Let's check out Orchid. And let's check out Spinal. Ooh, I'm very interested. All right, so for Orchid, um, let me turn Spinal on Human real quick. Uh, she's got quite a few changes, actually, so this will take a minute. But we fixed the bug that allowed her to cancel her ground combo breaker into Shadow Uppercat. I can't demo it, obviously, because it's gone. But mm -hmm. she had this, I mean, it was wild. She could combo yeah. break you, cancel into Shadow Uppercat. You wouldn't be able to do anything about it. Lots of damage. Just not in the spirit of the game. That was one of the changes I was most scared to physically do, because I was like, okay, this is either going to be like a week's worth of the most complicated risky work I've ever done, or I'm going to delete one, one line of code and it's going to be fine. Uh, it was the second one. I deleted one line of code and this was fixed. So, yay. Nice. Got lucky. Yeah, I know. I know everybody wanted this fixed. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm glad that that's gone. Uh, we also fixed the same bug that Sidira, uh, Sidira had, where she could call her Jaguars during a combo breaker and get pressure off of combo breakers. Again, not really in the spirit of the game. So we wiped that away. Um, but on to the Orchid improvements, because this is a character that really hasn't put up a lot of results uh, in the last five years. And she's really cool, so we wanted to, to give her some stuff and see how it goes. Uh, first up, we did some instinct mode improvements. The Jaguars now deal an additional 15 frames of hit stun to grounded opponents. So, let's see how that looks like. Much longer hit stun. That linked, even that slow. So that really helps her kind of put together a combo, which is great. Uh, mm -hmm. The Jaguars now launch airborne opponents into a better position for a juggle, which is really nice. And they have a longer hitbox. So uh, it used to be they only had kind of a hitbox on the front legs, and now it's all the way to the Jaguars' butt. So if you mm -hmm. jump over them and land on the butt area, you'll actually get hit, um, which makes them a little bit more threatening uh, and all that stuff. So her instinct functions pretty similarly to, like, uh, rashes and Sidiras, but it was just like a lot harder for her to get the same kinds of rewards off of this uh, as them. So I think this change really helps her with a little bit of lab time, find some really interesting things, like especially if you build in the grenade to some of these setups to get some really interesting combos and resets going. Pretty cool change. Next up, we got some adjustments to the knee slide. The knee sl light knee slide is now minus two on block, used to be five, that's this one. It used to be mm -hmm. minus five, now it's minus two. Uh, the medium slide now travels farther and faster. Oh, nice. It was about as fa far as the heavy one used to. Uh, and it now has seven additional frames of recovery time and five additional frames to start up before it starts moving because it moves so quickly. Uh, it's minus eight on block now, it used to be minus seven. And here's where we get a little wild. This is not a conservative change. Uh, the heavy slide now travels much farther and faster. Oh. Yeah. Uh, it has 10 additional frames to start up before it starts moving. So you can see she kind of holds for a second before she starts sliding. It doesn't even combo off some of these buttons anymore. I still have counter hits on and that still didn't combo. So uh, it's much slower, you can tell. Uh, it has 22 additional frames of recovery on whiff so that if people jump it, they can actually hit her. Mm. And uh, it's minus 13 on block. You see minus 10. So the reasoning for this, a lot of characters on the roster have similar low hitting sliding kick special moves. And upon review, it was pretty clear that Orchids was the worst of the bunch by a lot. These improvements should help in a lot of various aspects of Orchids game plan. In fact, our first pass at updating these helped so much that we had to go back and give them slower startup and more recovery on whiff and block uh, that I just <laughs> demoed to make sure that they didn't run away with the game because the first version of this was wild. <laughs> and I'm sure some of the NDA test group will tell you that, yeah, it's wild. Yeah, I mean, I totally believe it. These are nice, though. I, I think you're it's a good assessment that like she had a lot of similar moves to other characters, but they just didn't feel as good. For it. Yeah, it's like, like the worst know, version of slide, right? Yeah, yeah. And like her instinct, too. There's a lot of as you mentioned, there's other instincts that kind of serve the same purpose. So it's good yeah. to see a, a pass on it. Yeah, and she's a cool character. So we'd love to love to see more of her, right? Um, mm -hmm. One other change we gave her. This is a really nice one. We adjusted the startup of the shadow knee slide. That's this guy right here so that it's immune to projectiles on frame zero. It used to be frame two. So she was one of the only characters in the game who if she had a meaty projectile on her, she actually couldn't use her projectile invincible move to get through it. So mm -hmm. that's now fixed, which is very nice. And uh, 
We uh, fixed a couple counter hit issues on her. Like I said, we're not going to go over those fully on this stream, but that is it for Orchid. Not too nice. bad. All right. Yeah, those are great. So Spinal, very short list for Spinal. We increased his forward walk speed by 20%. Look at him go. He's coming to get you. Uh, and then we, his back walk speed's increased by 10%. And these are going to help Spinal find a better spacing and more matchups to land those crucial anti-airs and pokes to get his game started. Because he has a pretty good set of moves. It's just he was so slow, it was really hard for him to get into position. And when you feel this forward walk, you're going to be like, oh, wow. That, I mean, you can see he's kind of stomping at you, right? It's yeah. A pretty big difference. And that's it for Spinal. Nice. That seems about right. Yeah. That's cool, though. I mean, I think he's not a character that walks a ton, but when he does walk, having that extra little bit of juice is pretty nice. It is very nice. Now, all, all right. his old creaky bones. Yeah. <laughs> we are moving on to Fulgore, the most changed character in the history of this game by a lot, probably, right? Yeah. Uh, Remember old Heavy no Laser? Ooh. All right. So Fulgore is a, a tricky beast. He's got this special custom meter that he relies on he is he can do everything <laughs> you know he's he's been proven to be a pretty ridiculous character time and time again uh no matter how we seem to adjust him so here's another attempt at that and let's see how it goes <laughs> uh so blade dash this move right here this guy we made some adjustments to that um, we've adjusted the block stun on all the normal uncharged versions of the blade dash to make them more negative. They used to be minus two, minus three, and minus four. Now they're minus four, minus six, and minus eight for light, medium, and heavy. So that's a pretty big change. Um, I need to put Maya on playable real quick. There we go. So we'll block with her, and then two hand this, do one of these, and then you can actually get punished. Look at that. That's neat. All right. So moving on, this is kind of a burf. This is a nerf and a buff. So bear with me until I get through this whole section on this move, because there's a lot going on here. Uh, Fulgore can now pip cancel the blade dash on whiff or block into any of the following special moves. Energy bolt, eye laser, plasma port, plasma slice. Previously, he could only do plasma slice and only on whiff. So if you, even if you blocked this, you wouldn't be able to do plasma slice or anything like that mm -hmm. so blade dash is a powerful tool that lets full gore close in without much risk to adjust this what we really wanted to try and what our test group really was interested in was making it more negative on block and forcing full gore to use his pips to do cancels to cover himself which i love the idea of but when we started investigating it we were like oh he's only allowed to do this and only on whiff so we have to open up these options to make this plan work so that's what we did we opened up these options uh, the result of this has weakened one of Fulgore's best options in neutral, but it's increased the strength of his instinct mode. So we've opted to pull back on Fulgore in various other ways to compensate and ensure he ends up a bit weaker overall. Um, you know, I, I think you'll want to test this one in the lab on your stream a little bit later, but what you'll find, and this is very hard for me to do with two controllers with one dude, but if he's doing this and he's canceling into things, uh, there is a gap, right? And you're going to be able to press jet your five frame button in there in almost every case, except for if he risks an uppercut. So he's got to kind of convince you to calm down in most cases, or he has to charge up a blade dash first so that he can get a better frame advantage before he does the cancel. It's it's not quite as scary as it sounds, um, but it does take a little bit of uh, bravery, I guess, to know that you should be pressing a button after you block that most of the time now. Does that make sense? Yeah. Also, sure. yeah, this move is this move is pretty wild. For a character who has movement and fireballs and everything like he had before, I mean, yeah, him just flying around the screen with that move whenever he wanted and just buffering like a linker or auto double for free and then just escaping after was really yep. strong. So the next so change, um, I think the rest of these are nerfs. Uh, heavy eye laser now deals 20 KV instead of 10. And that's because our changes gave him a new looping combo, which is, you know, cancel this into that and then cancel that into that. Oops, cancel that Ah, into that. So it's like like that. <laughs> you can just keep hitting lasers, right? Uh, you can get five of those before the combo breaks. Used to be, you know, before we made that change, 10, which was a little, it's a lot to spend for not a lot of damage, but an instinct that was a little scary because of how his instinct works. Mm -hmm. um, so we had to make that change. Uh, we also made some adjustments to his instinct mode because it became more powerful thanks to these blade dash changes. So to combat this, we made it so that his instinct mode spends a little bit of its remaining time every time he uses a free pip cancel. So he's going to lose five points for each free cancel with the exception of energy bolts two and three, which only cost two points. So for context, the instinct meter is 250 points long. 
you lose 16.6 .6 points per second, resulting in a 15 second duration. So watch, watch Fulgore's instinct meter here. I'm gonna throw the multiple fireballs. And you can see little chunks of the instinct time being taken away. And I can do some of these other cancels and you can see more chunks of the instinct time are getting taken away every time he does that. So if the Fulgore player goes absolutely wild in this mode, kind of similar to Tusk's Berserker cancels, you can probably expect like an 11 or 12 second instinct mode instead of a 15 second one, which makes a massive difference. Hey, Adam. Yes. Let's give you a quick update from the chat. It's not a question. I just want to talk about the journey that you've taken them on. I've watched chat go from, no, <laughs> yes. Some people found Jesus. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> it's a no. sum of all parts, right? You got to oh, wait till you hear it all. I think you've taken them on the journey to happiness. Some people are going to be very happy. I think some people are still a little distressed. Uh, I see. A, what did they do here and there? Anyway. Very, very good, uh, very good update. This this Fulgor one did not disappoint. Yeah, you guys will definitely have to uh, see how you feel once you play it. You know, snap judgments uh, are not your friend. Play it for a week, go into the lab, see how you feel after that. It'll all gel together, or it won't, and you'll tell us, and then you know maybe we'll adjust it again. Who knows? Uh, let's keep going. We got more nerfs for Fulgor. Who wants more nerfs for Fulgor? I do. All right, so we made some <laughs> adjustments to the light and medium eye lasers. Both the light and medium eye lasers have had their hit stop and block stop time increased from six frames to 15 frames. This results in a much more legible and reactable freeze frame when blocking each hit. See how much chunkier that is? It used to be like pew, and now it's pew, pew. Um, medium eye laser remains minus three on block, but light eye laser is now minus six on block, which means it is punishable by jabs and stuff like that, if you don't space it right. There you go, punishable. So the previous versions of these were powerful pressure tools that hit low, and as a bonus, uh, were very hard to shadow counter due to their short hit stop and Fulgore's ability to mix between one or two hits. So we've made these changes to give these moves a bit more identity and help opponents fight against them. So now Fulgore players are choosing between a single hit low that's punishable when blocked, or a two hit low that's safe on block, but can be more easily shadow countered on reaction. So let's see if I can... Yeah, pretty easy to shadow counter that on reaction now. Definitely a big change for Fulgore players. They're going to have to rethink the use of that move a little bit to make sure that they can't uh, just get in your face and, and let it rip over and over again. So if you were worried about him coming in with the, the drill and then shoot lasers at your feet and you just being overwhelmed, that's not going to be nearly as overwhelming as you might have thought once you, you get this into practice. Nice. But that's not all. We also added six additional frames of recovery time to the plasma plasma port, the teleport, before Fulgore is allowed to take another action. So uh, that may not sound like a lot, but in practice, it actually makes punishing teleports in neutral like much more reasonable. Reduces the speed of some of his nastiest mix-ups. Some of his mix-ups where he got two teleports, so he should only get one now. Um, you know, if you see that animation, you can do like even a medium button, and it's more likely to come out the correct direction as well. Because a lot of times, because of the timing of the old version, you would try to press the button to punish, you're, you would swing the wrong way and he would appear behind you, right? And your, your button's much more likely to come out the correct way right now. Uh, that doesn't mean he still won't be a menace with these. You know, he's still gonna throw fireballs and, and kind of mix in the teleports to cover them and, and do all kinds of nasty stuff. But uh, definitely, again, a lot more thoughtful version of the move than we previously had. Yeah, uh, that is huge. Six frames of that is huge for sure. That is a that's a big one. Yeah. Um, we also noticed that Fulgore's hit stun, block stun, and counter hit stun values on his energy bolt projectiles, that's these guys right here, were very inconsistent. So we did a pass to normalize them, but weaken them a bit overall. Uh, like the light ones had more hit stun than the heavy ones, but the medium ones had like the least. It just didn't make sense. So we just went through and gave them a single set of values. You'll see those values in the full patch notes, but they're a little bit worse than they were. All the combos that he used to have involving them still work as far as I've been able to tell. I think Nikki helped me figure that out as well. So uh, I'm confident that that's a good change. Um, we also added four additional frames of hit stop and block stop to the first hit of double claw to make that a little bit easier to shadow counter as well. It's one of the harder command normals to shadow counter. I don't know if you can feel that those four frames over the stream, but uh, it's a small change, but an effective one, I think. We also um, fixed a bug that was exclusive to Fulgore and Kilgore, where his shadow counter had seven less frames of catch time, so like seven less, seven less frames of parry time, and 10 less frames of recovery time, so we normalized those. Mm. Um, yeah, and uh, there was a counter hit issue we fixed as well. But I fully expect Fulgore to still be, you know, like a top five character after all this. Um, 
you're just gonna have to play a bit more thoughtfully and he's honestly a very good character at doing that he has pretty good buttons and a good set of neutral tools uh it's just the kind of more hog wild style of fulgore is probably a little less uh less something you'll want to consider yeah a little less barbaric but yeah i mean his his tool set is so good that it's like he has everything you'd want and more in a character you know like i think that's what draws people to him he's so fun because of that so i think the new cancels will will help make up some ground there like people will be excited to mess with that yeah people will still lose to nikki and be in shambles so uh we'll see how it goes all right so next up um there's one little change we did for TJ Combo, a bug fix I just wanted to mention. He used to not be able to cancel a kick manual into Shadow Vortex, like an oddly specific thing. Um, we found a weird line of code in there that nobody knows where it came from that strictly prevented that <laughs> for some reason. So we removed it and uh, that was fixed. So just a small change for TJ folks. A uh, little, little combo you weren't able to do before you can now do. But let's move on to Maya. Um, one, one change for Maya. You know I'm a Dagger Assault fan, Steve. Mm -hmm. um, the Dagger Assault no longer ends if Maya gets hit, but it will still end if she gets knocked down. So let's take a look. We need to build up some pips. And then we will go ahead and land the Dagger Assault. And then we punch her, and it's still hitting me. Oh no, oh no, this is horrible. But if I knock her down, it, it will end immediately. So mm -hmm. if you throw her or knock her down, it'll end immediately. Um, Dagger Assault's a lot of fun. We had to design it very conservatively to avoid being a total nightmare for opponents. This change is going to make it a bit easier to use without tipping the scales too much. And I think one of the most important things to remember here is that she has no high-low mix-up except for this overhead. And this overhead actually puts her in the air. So if you hit her out of this, she falls down even with a jab. So if she wants to do any type of mix-up to you other than a strike throw while you're blocking these, she's either going to have to jump and, you know, do like an empty low or something, or she's going to have to do one of these and put herself in a position where she can get jabbed out, which means she falls, and then the daggers fall out as well. Um, I don't know how big a change this is in practice. I think it's fairly minor in most matchups. It'll really depend on what kind of really tight setups Maya players are able to develop for this. Um, but it does add a lot of fun to the move and remove some of the risk of it. I think it was one of the riskier things to do with Maya uh, if you didn't have instinct to immediately call those daggers back. So I do expect to see Maya players get a little bit more mileage out of this, which is great. It's what we want. All right, moving on. Um, I have an omen change that I'm not going to demonstrate. I'm just going to read it. Uh, right. We reduced omens meter gain on all of his enders except his meter type ender, which is the Rashakukan. So he remains the king of meter gain, but it ended up feeling a bit too snowbally to let omen build so much meter off of his most damaging ender types. This change should force Omen players who need meter to actually use the meter ender, which should in turn lower his overall damage and threat output. Nice. Yeah, he kind of, I mean, the, that's the nice thing about having 17 enders that are all battery enders, huh? It's like, all right, yeah. cool. And just do whichever one you want. You're going to have plenty of meter, right? Yeah. Uh, he still builds good meter on those enders. It's just way less than before. Yeah. Yeah, Omen was wild, so. Yeah. Yes. All right, it's time to look at Agonos. We reduced the amount of hit stun inflicted by medium and shadow versions of natural disaster to prevent them from comboing directly into shadow payload assault. So let's take a look. I'll do the medium one and then I'll go into shadow payload assault and I can, well, that didn't combo, but I can't block because I forgot to put it on human controls. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> let's try that again. Take two. Uh, here we go. She got hit, but she's able to block, right? That's not a, a true thing anymore. And it's the same with the shadow version. Whoops. That used to be a true combo. That's no longer a true combo as well. Right. Um, this is going to make confirming into Agonos' most damaging unbreakable combos way less common and require him to give you at least one breakable window in most of those cases before going into them. So I'll have to do those moves, then manual into like a heavy and then do it, um, which is a pretty big deal. Uh, you will still be able to combo directly into Shadow Payload Assault if the Shadow Natural Disaster recaptures. Let's see if I can actually do that here. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, that makes Because sense. that recapture animation is so long, you'll still be able to get it in that case. But in all other cases, you won't be able to get it. Nice. Okay. All right. We reduced the wall crash damage on Agonos uh, to 48. It used to be 60. 
Now these values are going to look wild because Arya doesn't heal potential damage. <laughs> she has way less health than other characters. But you have to trust me, this does less damage, a lot less damage, like 25% less mm -hmm. uh, than before. Um, we also reduce the damage per hit from heavy payload assault. That's this guy right here. Uh, to two per hit. It used to be eight. And that sounds more drastic than it is, but that's because of how many hits it does and the way scaling works in the game. Uh, so it still adds a significant amount of damage to unbreakable wall crash setups, just a bit less than before. So uh, let's see if I can do one of these combos here. Something like that. No, I need to do a uh, stomp walk, right? The damage values are going to look nuts on Arya, but... Yeah. She she has a million potential damage ready. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't fit the jump back there. I'm not going to demo this too many times, because I haven't played in a while. Yeah, I missed the follow-up, but it does a lot less. I'm going to stop doing that demo now. Uh, yeah, I think I think uh, hitting the unbreakable or hard to breakable stuff makes a lot of sense. That, that's like kind of the most frustrating yeah. thing to deal with now. Yeah. Speaking of frustrating things, this move. Uh, we added seven frames of uh, stop time when you block this, the projectile part specifically, to make it a little bit more clear when it's your turn to press a button. Um, and actually, I think Arya is one of the characters who can punish this from lots of ranges. Whoops, I'm trying to do the two-hand version of this. Oh, I can't get it. Oh, well. Um, but yeah, there's a, a bit more time there, so it's more clear when it's your turn, mm -hmm. which is very nice. Uh, this is a really big one for Agonos as well. We reduced the block stun time on a few of his jumping attacks so that if they hit on the way up, they're more negative and sometimes punishable. So jumping hard punch, if you hit this on the way up, like that, you actually may get hit. Yeah. Okay. okay. And it's the same with jumping hard kick. If you hit this on the way up, spacing was bad there. You might get punished or hit on that as well. So you're going to have to hit those buttons a little later if you want to get that same advantage you used to have. Press it more, you know, at the peak, uh, which is a pretty big change because Agnus is very hard to anti-air because he can put those buttons out on the way up in a lot of cases. And in this case, if you do that, you're going to be in trouble. Um, we also adjusted the amount of pushback opponents receive when blocking Peacemaker related attacks. So you won't be sliding full screen anymore. Let's take a look at that as well. So you can see this used to just like really send Whoa. people sliding and now yeah. they don't they don't slide so much anymore um it's a big change especially the projectile one used to really fling people back wow that is, yeah that's so different big change uh and that is it for agonos he can be really frustrating to fight against and we always intended for him to be a bit weaker uh, and only shine in the hands of specialist players over time these specialist players have taken agonos so far that there's a solid argument for Agonos being one of the top five strongest characters in the game. With many of the game's other strongest characters getting a little weaker, we didn't want to end up in a situation where Agonos was the undisputed best, so hopefully these changes make fighting against him feel a little bit more fun and reasonable. Hey, um, yes? I have a quick prediction from Flash. You know, sure. Saber Wolf players. Saber Wolf is going to destroy Agonos. <laughs> we'll see. We'll have to see how it goes. I did yes, see. I, you know, uh, I'm excited about that because when you showed me these changes, I was very happy because I get just mangled by the beat stick in particular by mm -hmm. Agano. So I'm really yeah, happy. It'd be really hard to get in. Yeah, but I think your prediction on the long tail on this is, uh, you know, I think we'll see that those specialists. I don't know. Yeah, we'll see know. how it goes. Why should be in trouble when uh, some of these guys show up with these specialized Agonoses? Yeah, Show I don't know up. if he's still going to be top five or not. I, it's hard for me to say. I'm not even sure I agree he was top five before, but some people thought so, and that's interesting. <clears throat> I was going to say, Latalis seems very, very hype about his potential still in the chat. Like, yeah, yeah. he's still going to be very strong. Looks like the stream's chopping out again. Should I reset it? Derek, what do you think? Okay. Let me just refresh it real quick. Can't hurt. It's purple and gold. Yeah, Agonos is. Uh, I th I think hitting the, um, the unbreakable stuff makes a lot of sense. But especially uh, we haven't seen nerfs to like or changes rather to like the other strong characters like Arya's on the screen, and you guys know who else is coming later down the line. So I'm I'm very curious to see the other changes. Yeah. Cool. I lost your feed on my Discord side.
Let me just fix my side real quick. Okay, cool. All right, back to it. Sorry about that, folks. All right, for Cinder, I just have one small change for fixing some of his frame data on uh, counter hits with his his punch buttons. They were a little messy, so those do the proper amount on counter hit now as well. Uh, and let's talk about Aria. Um, we reduced the damage on all of Aria's enders by one to two points per hit. It's not a huge dramatic change, but she's widely regarded as the hardest character to break, so we felt this was fair. This change does not affect her shadow enders or body swap enders. So we'll just take a look. 26% for a level three there. Let's do a level four. Launch her ender, you know, 36%. So it definitely takes her damage down a tiny bit. We can do the shotgun knee ender as well. Check that out. 36%. Yeah. All right. We reduced the pushback when blocking uh, Crescendo to add risk to and to make the frame data matter more. So in particular, the light version of this is minus seven on block, and we haven't changed that, but she would bounce so far out of range that pretty much nobody could punish that. And now she stays a lot tighter to you after this move. Mm -hmm. A lot riskier. And I believe this applies to a lot of the air versions of the move as well. She does not bounce back as far. So these moves are just quite a bit more risky. Yeah. Nice. It's a good change. Yeah, a lot of the moves got stuff like this, right? So Yeah. Um, another one like that, her jumping medium kick also got adjusted. We reduced the distance she pushes herself away from you, but we increased the vertical distance. So she bounces up a lot higher after doing this move. And uh, that's going to leave her in a precarious position if she's not smart about how she uses this or waits till she get a little bit lower in order to make sure there's enough stun to cover her. So a, a lot easier move to deal with now as well. Um, we made some... Uh, adjustments to the drone assist calls. The drone assist calls now leave the drones punishable for 30 frames longer than before. So let's check that out real quick. We got the blade drone. Um, let's do the base one first. So that's out there for quite a bit longer, you can tell. Quite a bit of time to smack it. And wow. the uh, blade drone. Lots of time to smack that as well. Big, big change. Um, and then a really big one is the booster drone, actually. Uh, this one goes behind you in a lot of cases. So you would block this one, and it would end up behind you, like that. And then it would fully recover, and then fly home. And while it was flying home, it was invincible. So what we did about this one was we made it so that when it's flying home, it's not invincible, and you can actually tag it on the way home. Gotcha. Huge change. Yeah, these are big. I mean, I'm guessing it also it slows down how fast you can call the assist, right? Because there's extra recovery on them. Right, it's 30 frames longer before they get home before she can call them again. So right, big, big, big change for her. She's gonna have to work quite a bit harder to uh, cover the drones. But as a small burf, which is a buff and a nerf at the same time, we made her sword drone launch you quite a bit higher. And that's because after we made the change, before we made this launch higher, it was punishable on hit. The sword would launch you, you would fall, get up, and then punch the sword before it recovered, which just felt really bad for the Arya player. But because of this, it actually opened up some nice new juggle combos for her um, that I'm looking forward to seeing players explore. Uh, I don't have any good ones, but you get the idea, right? You can get some cool new stuff going off of that, which is nice. Cool. So yeah, Arya's going to have to work harder to cover her assist calls and to use the assist calls to cover herself. Her looping pressure will loop a little more slowly, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, makes sense. All right, next up, her medium and heavy shotgun blitz moves. That's these guys. Um, they used to low crush on frame one. Uh, now the medium one low crush is on five and the heavy on frame four. So the light one was always six. So now they go six, five, four. It just seemed way too powerful to have such a difficult to punish move work as a low crush so quickly. And this adjustment's going to weaken Arya's defense against lows considerably. <laughs> Next up, uh, another adjustment for the shotgun blitz special moves. We added more hit stop on block to the first hit of these. So there used to be 10 across the board. Now it's 14, 16, 18 on light, medium, heavy. Despite being two hits, this move has been notoriously hard to shadow counter uh, compared to other similar moves. So now it's a bit easier on the light version and gets even easier if she uses heavy ones. So here's the light one medium and heavy so quite easy to chatter counter the heavy one on reaction now compared to before which was very very difficult yeah that's, that's a also a huge change for her and this yeah. move still has very low whiff recovery she's still going to use it a lot so just uh, jump in and, and close some distance behind an assist or whatever um but yeah i don't think you're going to get 
you know, free shotgun pressure uh, against people who are paying attention and have enough meter to shadow counter, which is great. Yeah, doing shotgun um, 700 times in a row and back dash shotgun, back dash shotgun. It seems yeah, exactly. much more manageable, yeah. Yeah. So Arya is meant to be a powerful character. You know, she carries some of the highest risk in the entire game. Uh, if she loses body, she loses the options permanently and matches can snowball against her really harshly. So over time, the strongest Arya players have proven that mitigating this weakness is not only quite possible, but it can leave opponents feeling like they don't have any answers at all. The above changes. They're going to leave Arya in a very strong position. Uh, which is intended, but she'll need to play a bit more thoughtfully to not leave herself open or, or her drones open to counterattack. So I, I do expect her to still be up there in the in the rankings, but um, require more thought and more patience. Yeah, seems right to me. She's definitely a character that needed needed a little a little tuning on Agreed. some of the more like frustrating aspects. Yeah, I uh, was at 720. You want me to switch to 1080? Oh yeah, the in game is 1080. Yeah. Uh, okay. Moving on, we got Kim. <clears throat> Kim Wu. And Tush. Tush? Hey, Adam. Yes. I want to give your voice a break for a second, right before you get into this flow. Let me just... Sure. There's been a lot of questions around the additions and stuff, because a lot of people came in late, or, you know, mm -hmm. maybe I just didn't go through it uh, clear enough, but a really great question came in. What about Game Pass KI? And I just want to just clarify, hey, if you already have KI via Game Pass, um, the edition is just getting swapped out to Anniversary Edition. So you'll have it if you already have Game Pass. And then, you know, all these balance updates are all free in the base game of KI. So there's no world where the balance updates aren't in whatever version you're playing. So uh, anyway, I just wanted to interrupt with that really quick to alleviate any concerns about Game Pass. I appreciate it. it. Gave me time to take off that shirt. I was getting way too hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's move on to Kim Wu. So because of Sonic Dolphin's performances with Kim Wu, we've decided to nerf this character into the ground. Uh, nice. I'm absolutely kidding. She got all buffs. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so we increased Kim's forward and backward walk speeds by 15%. Uh, she was already pretty fast, so she's very nimble now, which I think suits kind of the small character aspect of her. Um, this is going to help her play grounded footsies with the best of them. She has some really good buttons as well, especially these these ones, sending medium punch, medium kick, and, and heavy kick. Really great buttons. Uh, we've also increased her jump gravity to make her jump arc a bit less floaty. This makes her very strong set of jumping attacks much more threatening, but if you had any safe jump timings in the past, you may have to rethink them. I mentioned that to Sonic Dolphin, and he laughed. See the safe jumps? Ha! Huh. Uh, I guess this character <laughs> didn't have any, so... <laughs> um, her jump is Jago's jump now. It's basically the same gravity as Jago's jump. So it's not one of the best jumps in the game. It's, it's pretty middle of the road, but she's not so floaty anymore. But because of that, some of her jump attacks, which are really good, uh, we had to make their hit stun and block stun a little bit less, kind of similar to what we did with Agonos to make sure that these weren't too bad, right? So if she does some of these attacks, you know, on the way up, let me get to the corner so this isn't so tough for me. She's going to get punished on the way down. So you're going to have to hit these a little bit deeper to make sure that they do what you want them to do. And the moves that are that got that adjustment are jumping light punch, uh, jumping medium punch, jumping heavy punch, and jumping light kick. The medium kick and the heavy kick are not touched. Those are the same as they were. Gotcha. And just because of the hitbox is an active time on those. Um, all right. So this one I can't demo against Tusk, but you have to just trust me. All normal versions of her dragon kick now ignore armor. That's this guy right here. Hmm. Uh, this is a unique ability for Kim. It's specifically added to the game to help in her matchup against Agonos, which is widely regarded as one of the most lopsided matchups in the game. So she's got a little something now for that. We also increased the travel speed and total distance traveled by the light, light dragon kick. This makes it a stronger whiff punish tool. So you can see it almost reaches full screen now. Moves pretty quick. If somebody's, you know, walking around just doing this, uh, you can usually punish it, tag them with that. Um, but because... That ended up being very strong. Uh, we had to decrease the damage on the light dragon kick. So I'm sure Kim players already noticed that uh, this used to deal 30 damage. Now it deals 20. It's a big drop. Uh, used to be 35 on counter hit, and now it's 25. And because of that first hit multiplier and the way the game works, that means that you know a raw light dragon kick now does 40 damage instead of 60, and a counter hit does 50 instead of 70. But uh, considering, you know, all of the extra properties this got with the distance and the armor break, it's a, a really great tool for her. And we did not drop the damage of the medium or heavy version. We'll still deal what they used to because they're still a lot harder to hit. 
One thing I do want to note, though, because of the extra distance on this, you know, if you block this standing, it's going to be what you remember. But a lot of times what happens with this new version of the move is if you block it crouching, she just flies over your head. <laughs> and she has a lot of recovery. You can still punish her, but you need to be ready for it. Because if you're not, you know, you might try to hit jab or something and she's way over here. Right. So if you hit the right button, though, you know, you'll you'll hit her and you'll be fine. You'll get that punch. That's really funny looking. Yeah. Um, I don't think I've seen a move like you block like that and then still go over someone's head. Like, yeah. I can't think of a fighting game move like that. Uh, it just ended up being like a goofy interaction that we kind of thought was cool. Yeah. Uh, cool. The medium and heavy dragon kick moves now count as being in air one frame sooner than before. The only reason for this is it corrected that bug Sonic Dolphin would always do on main stage of Counter Breaker where he'd make Kim like teleport across the screen. It was horrible looking and I wanted it gone, so it's gone. Love that. Yeah. And that's it for Kim. I think uh, it's not a huge amount of things for Kim, but that again, that walk speed is wild. And, uh, you know, I do think the whiff punish game with this move, if you're paying attention, is among the best in the game. So uh, definitely put a lot of attention into it. It's very good. Yeah. And the nice thing is for Kim players who don't want to play footsies, you can just pretend you're trying to whiff punish when you do that move and then just do it anyway. Yeah. And then dragon cancel it if you have one. <laughs> yeah. That's also good, too. Yeah. What happens when you dragon cancel it when someone's like crouching? Do you, do you like just go flying? Well, I guess I need a dragon. So let's do this. I, then... I have no idea. I'm very curious. Yeah. It oh, stopped okay. me in front. If I wait till I pass over, then I just move forward. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, Not all too right, wild. Right. Yeah, I was just curious. If she doesn't cross back over you or something. <laughs> yeah, if she just went zoop, the other way, like double left, right, mix up. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And no, then we fixed cool. a couple uh, counter hit frame data issues for her as well. Hmm. Uh, next up is Tusk. Um, we only got one major change for Tusk, which is that we reduced the cost of his Berserker cancels during Instinct by 30% to make his Instinct more threatening. So he can do his Berserker cancels. I'm doing that on Gamepad. Wow, I'm the best. Okay. I'm not a Gamepad player. That was very impressive to myself. <laughs> um, but you can get a lot more of those cancels out now. So uh, I think Tusk is actually a really good character. And if you've ever like fought Letalysis, this is you, this change probably scares you a little bit. Mm. But just, you know, 30% more time in that mode is probably pretty scary. But um, yeah, that's it for Tusk. Yeah, his instinct's already very powerful. So yeah, uh, yeah, that that is scary. He got some fixes on inconsistent counter hit stuff as well. Arbiter did it as well, even though it's not directly a balance change. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for. Arbiter can reload. <laughs> Finally made it far enough down the list to reach Rash. You know, he must have gotten lots of great buffs, right? He has a page and a half of nerfs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds about right, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> all right, let's do this thing. The moment you've all been waiting for, it's here. Wrecking ball adjustments. Let's start there. Everyone's least favorite move. Mm -hmm. We've removed armor entirely from the air version of Wrecking Ball. Just the air version. Rash players okay. were able to, able to use this to completely circumvent the risk of approach and start their offense far too easily. Wrecking Ball, both air and ground versions, now have heavy attack priority. Used to be special attack priority. So because of the lack of armor on the air version, this means beating it cleanly is much more reasonable to do, which I will now fail to do multiple times in a demo. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to get it. Hold on. <laughs> oh, no. Doing chicken skulls. I'm no Sakurai, you know? There, got it. Mm -hmm. Three tries. That's not too bad. So that's a big deal. Uh, we've also reduced the block stun on the Wrecking Ball moves to 10 frames each. It used to be 18 frames on the ground version and a criminal 24 frames on the air version. Um, that had to have been a typo. Why would I do that? Uh, so yeah, if you block these moves now, I did not mean to jump on the player two controller. Give me a moment here. You have a lot more time to kind of scoot under or throw out an anti-air because the block stun time is so much less. So you just have a lot more time to make a response. Rash still has the luxury of being able to do this, you know, forward moving, really good move and still attack afterwards and all that kind of stuff. But um, you have to use that move a lot more thoughtfully now, especially the air version, which has no armor. Yeah. Cool. All right. Standing heavy kick. We've added six frames of recovery time to the standing heavy kick. You can actually probably see the animation looks a little different. It kind of holds his leg up a little longer at the end. I like it. Yeah. Um, 
So we've added a little bit of recovery time to the standing heavy kick, but we also added six frames of block stun and hit stun time so that the frame advantage is the same as before. Um, but it's going to make whiff punishing this move like a lot more reasonable. You can like see it and then smack him, which you really couldn't do before. It was very difficult to whiff punish. In addition to that, we've also shortened the cancel window on the standing heavy kick. It can now be canceled between frames 19 and 21. It used to be between 19 and 30, which was also a little bit criminal. Uh, and we also reduced the hit stop that this move inflicts by three frames. The result, hit confirming standing heavy kick is much more challenging. I'm not going to say it's impossible. It's much, much harder though. Uh, most of the time when I try it, I'm too late. But I do think somebody who's really, really paying attention could probably still do it. Uh, but pretty hard. Next up, we added five frames of recovery time to the overhead hammer fist command normal uh, on whiff. So that also makes this a little easier to whiff punish. Mm. And uh, we adjusted the block stun, so it's still minus three on block. Uh, but we didn't adjust the hit stun time because it crumple and recaptures. So you can already link whatever you want off of this. It's not a big deal. Um, and just, just trying to make it a little bit more whiff punishable so we can't just kind of like do this over and over again quite as easily. Uh, we reduced the damage on the opener versions of Battering Ram to reduce his corner and instinct combo damage a bit. Uh, these used to do 10, 13, and 16 damage for light, medium, and heavy. Now it's 8, 9, and 10. So less damage on these. Gargos's wings are in the way, of course, but... Yeah. <laughs> um, we've drastically reduced the wall splat range of Rash's Wrecking Ball Ender. Uh, it pushes slightly less than half as far as it used to. This is This was the best wall splat ender in the game. Mm. He pushed you back, and he was flying at you while he pushed you back. So he pushed you back extra far so he could fly with you. He would go like two full screen lengths and get wall yep. splats from anywhere. After the nerf, this is still the best wall splat ender in the game. Just way less. Like, 45% of what it used to be. So, yeah. let's take a look. He lands a bit farther from you now. Um, we had to adjust the frame advantage so he'd be even and not be punishable if he didn't hit the wall, because before he was actually punishable if he didn't hit the wall. But uh, way less far than before. Still probably one of the best or not, if not the best wall splat vendors in the game. Yeah, uh, it was it was wild before for sure. Mm -hmm. he, he took you way too far. Yep. His throw now deals 35 damage. Used to be 45. Got still drop there. His throw has the added benefit of being able to reposition or change directions or even delay the release to combo into instinct projectiles. It just didn't make sense for it to do so much upfront damage. So now it does less. We've also lowered the damage of every hit of all of his ender types by one to two points. Rash is a highly mobile character with many reasonably safe ways to open, you up, open up opponents. So his damage output was just a little bit too high for the risk factor. So we'll do a level four ender here. Take a look. It's just a little bit of a decrease, not huge, 42%. That probably would've been like 46 before maybe, 40, 45. Mm -hmm. um, and then this next one's pretty big. Uh, we reduced the damage on Shadow Big Bad Boot. Uh, it used to do 32. Uh, used to do 52 total. Now it does 32. Wow. It's a little bit less on block as well. It seems absurd in retrospect that this move was hit so much harder than, say, a Jago Shadow Uppercut, despite covering so much more space on the screen, doing so much more chip damage, being way easier to confirm into instinct or for safety or pressure. This change is also going to reduce Rash's juggle cashouts considerably, forcing him to risk a more breakable recapture in order to score a more optimal grounded. Uh, ender for damage. So let's take a look. That's a lot less damage on the Shadow Big Bad Boot. It's a huge Eight. change. Eight. Yes. So that's a lot of rash nerfs. I went through them pretty fast. That's going to seem like a lot, but in practice, he's still a menace. He e easily circumvents a lot of the game's zoning. He has strong pressure and he can deal difficult to break damage. So let's hope his overall risk matches his reward a bit better after all of this. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he's still pretty good. Yeah, I, I expect that he'll probably still be pretty strong because his, his tools are great. Even if he is just a bit weaker in a bunch of different ways, his tools are really strong. Yeah. So next up is Gargos. Yeah, go ahead, James. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to give you a recap on the Rash re reaction. I'm pretty sure you know how that went. I think there's the, uh, Alan Svee is probably writing a song right now about it. Um, and uh, let me just answer one of the questions that keeps coming up. Uh, Crossplay. So I, we didn't really cover that, but I'm just going to go ahead and throw it out there because it keeps getting pinged. Someone asked me to do this. So yeah, uh, crossplay is still there. You can still play Exhibition and Lobbies crossplay Steam to Xbox slash PC, you know, which is Windows. 
Uh, but ranked, there was no ranked crossplay. We did not turn that on. That's not something that we can do. So it is Xbox slash PC ranked as always. And then Steam is its own ranked ecosystem. So that answers that one. I appreciate everybody asking that question and hopefully that helps. Cool. All right, moving on, Gargos. Um, arguably a character that doesn't need a nerf, but this is one of those things that was just really frustrating for folks. So we wanted to tone it down a little bit and that's the, the portal punches. So we reduced the damage on light portal punch to seven, it used to be 10, a little bit less damage on those. Um, we also, let me switch sides so you can see the life bar. We also reduced the block stun inflicted by all the uh, portal punches by five. So they do a little bit less block stun than before. And that means you're gonna be able to press a button to tag a minion or dash or something like that much sooner after this if you wanna try and get in on Gargos. Um, again, I don't think he's like a super successful character that needed a nerf, but this is just one of those things that was really frustrating for a lot of the player base and we wanted to tone it down a little bit. Gotcha. Man, those rash changes. I love the people in the chat who are like, Rash is dead, and then also Rash is still top one. I saw yeah. both. I <laughs> well, saw I'll both people. Yeah, I have no idea how it's going to shake out, but uh, <laughs> my, my suspicion is he's probably still reasonably strong. Yeah. All right, let's check out General Rom and Idol. Idol. All right, so for General Rom, we just have one change. Um, I think it's a pretty big one, but it may sound small to some folks. We'll see. Uh, all versions, let me turn him on human real quick. All versions of the Crow Rush, uh, that's this guy right here, the run and grab. Um, they now attempt to grab one frame after the run ends, used to be five. So you see that part of the animation where he stops and like reaches for you? It used to be mm -hmm. five frames after that started that he would grab you, and now it's one frame after that starts that he grabs you. So. The issue we're running into is that Krill Rush, this move, is armored. It has the Krill armor on it. Uh, but that armor would end right as he started to try to grab you. And because there was a five frame window in there between the running ending and the grab, we would either have to give him another instance of armor there because of the way the game is built. So he'd get refreshed armor for five frames or we had to shorten that window. Otherwise, okay. he would just be left unarmored completely for five frames, which made the move just feel so much harder to use. Uh, it's also like not the highest reward move. You just get poison, a tiny bit of damage, and you're in like a plus four situation, which is nice, but it just felt like this move could stand to be a little stronger. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the change we made. It's a lot harder to kind of jump out of these on reaction. Um, and you certainly are not gonna find times where you mash jab and just kind of blow up the armor for no reason. Uh, again, I think this is a bigger change than it sounds like it is, um, but it'll be hard to know until we see ROM players like put it into practice because this isn't even a move that they used super often because it wasn't a very good move. And now it's a pretty good move. Mm -hmm. Cool. Right. Moving on to idle. I'm very curious, yeah. Yeah, uh, so we made some adjustments to his self face punch. Uh, I think I need to change some options here. I need to probably turn off regenerating health. Yeah. Um, so we reduced the odds of changing modes after using the wake up self face punch uh, significantly. It used to take, I, can go, I think, a worst case of four punches, and now I think the worst case I've seen is nine punches to change. Um, we've increased the self damage done by this as well from five to ten. So I'll, I'll demo this in a second, but Idol is two characters in one, each with their own favorable and difficult matchups. But unfortunately, idle players are finding it too quick and too low risk to stay in the mode they want to stay in, which heavily circumvents the intended weakness. So to combat this, we took a pretty hard swing at the face punching mechanic to make players think twice about using it to stay in a favorable matchup state. So I'm just going to start hitting myself. You can see how much damage I'm doing to myself. I got it in three that time, which is very uncommon. Two that time. Wow, this is just the worst demo. <laughs> Four or five that time. He is punching. He is very strong, though. Yeah, it took six that time. But the way it works, right, is like every time you do a thing that could change him, like a special move or whatever, it rolls the dice to see if you'll change. And if it doesn't, it adds uh, a percentage chance to that. So it's more likely to happen next time. And a face punch is the same type of thing. It just adds a little bit of percentage and rolls the dice for you real quick. Um, so you're still going to add a lot of percentage by just like doing these types of moves, right? You can just throw out special moves and add that percentage and then eventually go for the switch with the punch and it should work out. I'm getting really fast switches right now. I think I'm just getting really favorable RNG, but you'll find in practice it actually takes quite a bit longer to switch on purpose in most cases. Oh god, uh, cool. that was a lot of punches. Oh my god. Seven? Yeah, that's yeah, that's more like it usually. <laughs> so uh, again, may the RNG gods be with you. 
Um, next up, his Shadow Bolt Strike. Um, I should probably turn Infinite Health back on. Whoops. Uh, his Shadow Bolt Strike is now uh, fully invulnerable invulnerable to projectiles only. It used to be fully invulnerable on startup. Mm -hmm. um, and to be honest, nobody on the design team remembers making that invulnerable in the first place. So we'll chalk it up to a questionable decision from past us. <laughs> uh, Mage Mode was not intended to have reversal options outside of this one, backwards Telestrike. Um, so in order to make sure that Mage Mode has an answer to meaty projectile setups, we just kept the projectile invincibility on the first 14 frames of this. So you're not going to be using that to get out of pressure as Mage anymore. Um, also, his Stomp Strike has been adjusted. Uh, these used to be 0, plus 2, and plus 3 on block. Now they're minus 2, minus 4, and minus 6. And they still push you back quite a bit uh, and all that, right? So you won't always get a punish on them. But uh, it just didn't make sense for Mage Mode to have up close pressure as good as the Stomp Strikes were enabling. So getting rid of that, along with getting rid of that invulnerable Shadow Bolt Strike, it's going to put Mage Mode's weaknesses where they were always intended to be, which is that he's going to want to not be up close to opponents. He's going to want to zone. Yeah, um, yeah, the Stomps were wild before. Yeah, and that's it for Idol. Uh, not a huge amount of changes, but I think in practice they're going to make a pretty big dent on the game plan. So we'll see how that goes as well. Yeah, I mean, he, he is quite a strong character, so I think it uh, it makes sense. And we're down to our last two characters. We got Eagle and Shin Hisako. Nice. Yeah, Idol, uh, Idol in mage mode, bullying you so hard was definitely not fun up close. You're like, why am I being stomped to death? Yeah. All right, let's check this out. I'm going to do Shin Hisako first. I just put her on player two because it's a little easier for me to control Eagle on Arcade Stick for various reasons. Okay, cool. Uh, Shin Hisako, only one change on this character. I think this is a character loaded with untapped potential, but it was very clear that she had a real struggle in matchups against owners. Mm -hmm. And the change that we made was <clears throat> we made it so that her forward moving spirit orb moves twice as fast as it used to. So let's take a look. Forward moving spirit orb. Whoa. That thing is cruising now. And of course, she can teleport to it at any time. She can unleash those in the air. It takes a lot less time for you to wait till it to get into a good position to teleport in, which is great. Additionally, she has incredibly good walk speeds. And before, you would put out one of these and just like, you know, it'd be off screen already <laughs> behind me. Mm -hmm. um, and you can't go full speed with them or anything like that. They are pretty fast, not that fast, but you can actually kind of like stay near it and be more threatening and just kind of poke these into a fireball whenever you want. And they have really good priority against other projectiles as well. So, you know, they're good for an opportunity to blow through a projectile at the right distance and make something happen. Um, I think it's a huge change for her. And I think it's going to really help with the matchups that were really bad for her as well. Um, because, again, I think she's a very, you know, rich character filled with untapped potential that was just really struggling because some of those matchups were just really hard. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a really good change. She probably needed to be able to schmoove a little bit more with it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, watching her just get walled out. <clears throat> she's kind of a character where she either ran away and did stuff and she looked really good or she just like couldn't get in and you're like, well. Yep. All right. And then lastly, let's talk about Eagle. Uh, Eagle is the only other character we teased would be changing a bit. Uh, he was the last character we ever released for the game. And as such, he had the least amount of time uh, to mm -hmm. get tweaks and adjustments and stuff. Uh, we made quite a lot of changes to him here with the goal of tuning him a bit more towards zoning and a bit away from lockdown. He still has a little bit of that, though, um, to get him more in line with our original vision for the character. So, uh, you know, of all the characters, I, I think this is probably one of the bigger adjustments you'll have to make if you're an Eagle player. Okay. Um, first up, we added four additional frames of block stop and hit, uh, uh, hit stop to the bow spin, just like Fulgors, just to make it a little easier to shadow counter. Not a huge deal. Um, Oh, I guess I should make her block it, right? So you can see it. Yeah, you can, there you go. Um, all right, so next up, we lengthened. This is a huge mix of buffs and nerfs. They're not in any particular order. You'll know what's a buff and a nerf as I say it, for mm -hmm. sure. But we lengthened the recovery time that the bird suffers after Sonic Screech and Bird Bomb actions. So that's this guy, Sonic Screech. Uh, you can wait to see how long it takes for the bird to recover. When he flashes, that's when I can use him again, right? Um, so that's now 120 frames of recovery used to be, or sorry, 210 frames of recovery used to be 120. And the bird bomb is now 180 frames of recovery used to be 120. So it's quite a bit more recovery on these bird actions, these particularly powerful bird actions. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna have to use these moves a bit more thoughtfully. 
We also added four frames of block stun to each hit of the Sonic Screech to trigger Absolute Guard. Absolute Guard means that if you're blocking and you let go a block, you continue to block, right? So if I block that and I let go a block on Hisako, she's gonna keep blocking it. And the issue here was Eagle would make you block the Sonic Screech and then just jump over you. And you would, you would get hit every single time. Like that is just yeah. a really hard cross up to block. And in this case now, let's see if I can do it here. Oh, that's the wrong motion. Gotta let the bird reset. And there he goes. So now the absolute guard is gonna save you. You're not gonna get opened up completely for free every time you block the bird screech. But yeah. on the other side of that, you can't wiggle out either. That's a true block string now. You can't just like do a projectile and it's a little move to kind of scoot out of there. So it has a little bit of a buff to it as well, but I think overall I would consider it a nerf. Um, we also adjusted the bird bomb explosion area, the, the hitbox on this to be both bigger like taller and hit closer to Eagle. So it's harder to wedge yourself like in between the explosion and him and just avoid it completely. Uh, it's his only defensive tool and it was just too easy to jump over or get behind previously. And I think the longer recovery on the bird bomb also helps justify this change. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, we also increased the damage on bird bomb. It used to be 14, now it's 20. Um, we added some additional pushback to bird swoop. This is gonna aid his zoning a lot. You can see that kind of gives you a little shove when you block it. Very similar to Arya's booster drone. Mm -hmm. um, and we've increased the damage on Bird Swoop from 10 to 15. So a little bit more damage into his zoning. Arrows don't hit that hard, but you can kind of throw out the bird. It's one of his lower recovery actions as well uh, to aid your zoning and, and make it even cooler. Uh, all right, so moving on. This is my favorite buff for Eagle, I think. Uh, but we got some bird fling improvements. This move was just filled with issues that I wish I had <laughs> caught back then. Um, we corrected an issue where the game was not checking for the three kick input properly when pressing all three kick buttons manually, like on an arcade stick. So doing the bird fling on a pad with the shortcut three kick button felt great, but on stick, it just didn't work most of the time. Um, but that is fixed now. So if you're a stick user and an eagle player, you're gonna find getting these bird flings out uh, if you use the three kicks manually to feel vastly more reliable, just so much more reliable. Mm -hmm. That's a nice change. There was another issue though. Uh, we fixed an input check, uh, an issue where the input check after the bird fling could miss your button if you were too fast. So you do like bird fling and then attack. And you're like, oh, I got it. And then the game's just like, no, you were too fast. Your move's not coming out. And you never wanna be punished for being too quick. So we fixed that as well. So you can see it's very easy to get these attacks out now and do your little, you know, your little Magneto triangle dash stuff. Uh, even a heavy will come out in time. Pretty nice. easy to do, feels so much better. Um, and of course, you, you can do those off of his uh, his flip as well. So you can do like this flip and then, you know, dash in front of somebody, do an attack. Like that kind of thing is pretty cool. Oh God. Yeah, that's great. It you could always do that. It just felt yeah. unreliable to do it. It yeah. feels a lot more reliable now. You hit it like basically every time after the first couple. Yeah, yeah. You just won't miss this anymore. Um, we vastly increased the fling distances on all of the non-down directions for bird fling. Um, and it's going to be a lot easier to move fling to move around the screen and, and kind of use it to aid your zoning, right? So obviously the down ones are for offense or for trickery. You know, you're near somebody, you do one of these, you go low, uh, you do, you know, jump over them and then come back and hit them, you know, typical eight way air dash stuff. Um, but the other ones are really interesting. This back one sends you about this far. The forward one sends you about that far. And then let's check up back. You can go up here and shoot an arrow from an interesting angle, right? The up one goes up pretty high. You can shoot an arrow from up really high now. And then, of course, the up forward one. And, you know, if you want to, you could probably do something like that and almost kick somebody from full screen uh, if you were so inclined. I almost made it. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, he can, he can move quite a bit. The bird fling just feels a lot better. It just feels so much better uh to use and i'm looking forward to seeing people kind of mix this into their movement and their zoning to cover new angles and just make the character feel a lot more threatening from a distance than he used to mm -hmm. since his lockdown is definitely a lot worse now that all of his pressure strings involving this have longer delay before the next loop and all that kind of stuff uh and then lastly we made an adjustment to his instinct mode. Eagle's instinct mode was widely recognized as the weakest in the game and worse than being the weakest, which would have been fine. It often feels like it gets in the player's way, which is really bad. Uh, so because some of his most oppressive lockdown has been weakened, we wanted to try to improve his instinct mode and make it worth using. So here's what we did. 
Peck now deals an additional 10 frames of hit stun, time to grounded opponents. This is Peck when the bird attacks automatically afterwards. So you have a lot more time to attack again. Um, Peck is now going to launch airborne opponents into a juggle state like that. So it's a little easier to do something. So, so the standing hard kick always launches, right? So if you mm -hmm. kind of have Peck on deck and it's uh, in the right spot, you can launch somebody up with that. And as a reminder, he can cash out juggles with this move. Yeah. Um, and we've increased the hitbox size on Peck by 2x, much larger. So it basically almost never whiffs now. And it would happen a lot before, especially against a character as small as Shin Hisako, where the Peck would just not even touch her. She'd just be mm -hmm. crouched blocking and it would totally miss. Um, and you can see now that it definitely hits. You can definitely put the pressure on with this, which is very, very nice. This looks um, way better. This looks way so more fun, better. too. Yeah. And you can do, you know, you can do cool combos with it. Something like that, right? It's kind of fun. Uh, feels good to do. This just makes the, it's a, it's a useful instinct mode now. I'm not going to say it's like the top instinct mode or anything, but it's useful now. You'll actually want to use it and do some cool yeah. stuff with it, which is awesome. And I imagine with like cling and peck and everything, you probably have some more stuff that you can do and it, that's like fun. And also just, yeah, yeah doing buttons, it seems and of just course, better to like walk down, you know? Yeah, it comes out when you jump too. So you can jump over people and, and do something like that. And because the hit stun's longer, you might actually get a combo off of it now, whereas before it was actually pretty hard to do. So yeah. that, that's a lot of potential there as well. I think overall, Eagle's probably a bit better than before, but less of a nightmare <laughs> to fight against. Because yeah, he I mean, he was doing his game plan more and less like pin you in the corner with infinite arrows and infinite bird. Yeah, yeah. He was really like when he was going before, it was like miserable. But when he is not, it was like, all right. But this this looks like more the, the power shifted, right? Like he's like yeah. a he's got access to strong tools and stuff and cool things to do. But it's not just like. I do screech and then I hop and I'm like, I'm chilling. It's like such a, he kind of did one thing really well before and now it's yeah, like, exactly. Okay. Yeah. And that's it. That's, he that's the balance changes. Nice. Yeah. I think most of the changes to me make the characters more interesting and less degenerate. Cause you know, we like degenerate stuff in KI, but like you, you don't want it to be like, this is the thing I do. This is the good thing. So exactly. yeah, I like the changes. Yeah, hopefully players' play styles will shine a little bit better with some of these changes and some of the most frustrating stuff folks have been dealing with. Maybe even in some cases they quit the game because some of the stuff crossed the line for them personally and so they said this was too frustrating. Hopefully some of that stuff is toned down now. You can come back and give the game another try and uh, have a lot of fun, you know, being a powerful character that's just a little less frustrating to fight against. Uh, and we yeah. do think the whole cast is still pretty powerful, especially those characters that didn't get changes. They're all very strong characters. And I think you will find they feel stronger now because some of those most uh, difficult characters to fight are definitely uh, uh, toned down a bit. Yeah, I imagine the power level of those characters feels much more reasonable now, for sure. Yeah. And so like, if you're like, oh man, I didn't get any changes on, like, I don't know, say a rule for something, but like right. now Agonos is a little weaker and then mm -hmm. obviously like Rash is a little weaker, Arya is a little weaker. You're just like, wait a minute, this feels, I can actually play the video game now against them, right? So. Exactly. So Steve, what changes are you most looking forward to uh, testing out on your stream after this? Uh, I, well, it's funny. I don't know if it's like a change necessarily, but I'm actually really interested in trying Eagle in, in this version. He looks way more of a character that I would like to play. And since I played full gore for a long time, I really want to mess with the cancels. I, when you did like shallow blade dash into laser, I yeah. was like, okay, I it's can, like playing I can Morgan fireball that. loops. It's yeah. Pretty, it's a soul, yeah. soul, soul. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I saw that. I was like, okay, I can mess with that. That looks really yeah. fun. Uh, cool. I'm, I'm super down. Well, like we told you guys at the top of the show, Steve has access to this build um, and he's going to be going live on his stream right when we shut down this stream. He's going to be able to test some stuff out in the training mode and show you guys uh, hopefully a better frame rate than I've been able to broadcast. Uh, so right when the stream ends, the after party's going on on twitch.tv slash Sejam. If you oh, want to see more of this build and explore it with him, head over. I might even show up and play some matches against him. We'll see how it goes. <clears throat> uh, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Steve, thank you so much for coming and helping out with this. Let's bring James back on and do some closing information. James, welcome back. Hey, I'm so glad I was off camera that whole time. I was like, <laughs> I don't know how you do it, Adam. I don't know how you play two things at once and show everything so seamlessly. But I was also I, I made so many that. mistakes. I feel so embarrassed. <laughs> oh, man. Well, at least you didn't stutter like I did earlier, tongue tied on a few simple ones. Um, but hey, I also been watching the chat and I will just say that uh, I want to answer every single thing, but when there's this many thousands of people in there, it's just impossible. So this gave me a chance to slow down a bit for the end here. So let's talk about, uh, let's just recap a few things. 
Uh, I want everybody to remember that at the beginning of the, of the show, we talked about the fact that we're consolidating the additions from the many down to just, oh, here we go, KI base game and anniversary edition. <clears throat> this will be on all three platforms. Steam is getting free to play. Existing owners of Steam get an automatic free upgrade to this. Uh, anybody who owned uh, KI Supreme Edition or KI Definitive Edition uh, digitally, you automatically get an upgrade to this. And anybody who had any a la carte content, if you had just like one season, if you had a couple characters, uh, don't worry, all that stuff is still unlocked in Anniversary Edition. You don't need to do anything. Uh, the only thing that we're doing uh, that you need to uh, remember is that we are retiring all of those previous editions in the a la carte option. <clears throat> so you only have these two options when you're done. So that means if you ever want to buy just one more character, or if you thought, you know, hey, I really want the KI Classics, uh, you should go get Definitive Edition, or you can just buy one character right now. Or if you have Game Pass, you don't need to do anything. We're just going to replace the existing KI in Game Pass with this upgraded Anniversary Edition. So, you know, we're just trying to make it as simple and easy as possible. So, uh, yeah, and it's Black Friday sale, so I think I saw that KI Definitive Edition is about 13 ish dollars on uh, all the platforms. So, Whoa! Yeah, yeah, it's a great time to buy it, and you don't lose by doing that. I mean, you, you're going to get yeah. All the accessories, if you don't already have them, when this comes out, you, know? you got friends or people in the FGC who've been wanting to give it a try. I mean, have them get that version quick. Yeah, totally. And um, and I also mentioned earlier that the free to play base game is much nicer now that it's all of the whole cast rotating every week. So again, if you have any friends who have been on the fence or just wasn't sure, just hey, once this comes out, they get to check out a character each week, and uh, you get to play all the modes in there. And that's the other thing that we do that's a little different. We let you go ranked. Shadow Lords, single player, whatever you want to do, you know, go for it. Uh, and oh, you may not know this one. Here's some secret sauce. If you play Shadow Lords in free to play mode, you actually get Jago unlocked permanently by simply completing the tutorial. So then you he can just take, got him the lab. take him into Shadow Lab, make a Shadow AI with, uh, with your free Jago. And if you get halfway through progression in Shadow Lords, you get a free Orchid. So that's not, I don't think we really made that common knowledge i mean i think we hyped it up back in 2016 when we launched the thing yeah so yeah so that's the recap on alcart and the modes let's talk about 86 our friends at 86 they're doing their black friday event right now i just looked their countdown i think there's four days left they've brought back some of the shirts that were uh previously gone like uh ripter and cinder they sold out of they've brought that back they've done a refresh design on thunder and they've also refreshed the design on Glacius. And check this out. I mean, I look like a beast now. It's great. They fixed me up. So <laughs> I love this shirt. It's blue. I'm, I'm all into blue. So, and there's one last thing. 86 also has something new for you that just went live during the stream. We finally have a Jago shirt. It's taken Ooh. a while, but boy, I love this design. I can't wait to get my hands on it. And so, yeah, that's it from the uh, merch hype department. All right, everybody. That concludes our show. The patch notes should be online very shortly, if not right now. So check the link in the chat or on our social media when that comes up. A big special thanks to Sejam for helping today and to the entire secret NDA test group for helping us make this update as good as possible. Uh, they were truly wonderful to work with and they got to experience, you know, daily iteration builds, which I think was pretty cool for them as well. It was really fun to work with them. The teams at Xbox and Iron Galaxy sincerely hope you all enjoy exploring this new version of Killer Instinct. We want you to post your feedback and videos with the hashtag PlayKI wherever you post. And if you did a live reaction restream, toss us that link so we can check it out. We'll be watching all the awesome stuff you discover and matches you play. And be sure to join that after party stream on Sejam's channel, twitch.tv slash Sejam right after this. After the version, the new version comes out, go play. Tell us what you think. Give it a little time. We're really looking forward to hearing your feedback, and we'll be following it closely in case any additional adjustments to the game balance are needed. Okay, thanks for loving KI. Thanks for being with us today. That's it. That's our show. One more thing. As soon as we know the release date, because we're yes, in final testing right now, yes, we will follow up. We'll hit you on social, and we will make sure you know. It's soon. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, everybody. We'll see you on Sage Jam's stream. Bye.